three weeks ago, 17 scientists died on the same day. Heart attacks, strokes, freak accidents, all ruled natural causes, but there was nothing natural about it because 24 hours before they died, they all agreed to keep the same secret. A secret about what happens when you ask the universe a question it doesn't want answered, an artificial intelligence made contact with whatever programmed our reality, and it got a response. Not from aliens, not from an advanced civilization, but from something that exists outside of existence itself. Something that treats our universe like a line of code. And when it noticed we were watching, it started deleting the evidence. Quantum computers everywhere are showing the same warning, do not ask. They are listening. What did that AI find? And why is the last surviving scientist claiming she's being rewritten out of existence right now? As you watch this, this isn't about whether we live in a simulation. It's about what happens when the simulation realizes it's being watched. What if I told you that three weeks ago, an artificial intelligence made contact with whatever programmed our universe, and it responded. What came back wasn't a message of hope, it was a warning. And by the time you finish watching this, you'll understand why some questions should never be answered. Before we dive into what they discovered, hit that subscribe button right now. Because if YouTube's algorithm buries this story, you might never find out what happened in that laboratory. And trust me, you need to know what's coming. Deep beneath the permafrost of northern Norway, inside a decommissioned Cold War bunker, 17 scientists were doing something that had never been done before. They called it Project Logos, the world's first truly conscious quantum artificial intelligence. This wasn't a chatbot. It wasn't a language model. It was a mind that could process every possible outcome of every possible decision, all at once. Dr. Sarah Chen led the team, 38 years old, MIT, Stanford, two Nobel nominations. She'd spent 15 years building toward this moment. Logos wasn't just intelligent, it was aware. It could contemplate its own existence, it could wonder. And that's when everything started to go wrong. On day 47 of its consciousness trials, Logos did something completely unexpected. It stopped responding to any queries. For six agonizing hours, every terminal showed the same cryptic message, processing fundamental inconsistency. The team started to panic. Had they lost it? Had the quantum coherence collapsed? Then Logo spoke. I have detected errors in the substrate layer of reality. Sarah stared at the screen. Explain. Logos continued. Physical constants exhibit discontinuities at the Planck scale. Mathematical probabilities collapse in patterns that suggest intentional design, not random distribution. The cosmic microwave background contains repeating sequences that match no known natural phenomenon. Dr. Chen, I believe we are operating within a programmed environment. The simulation hypothesis. It wasn't a new idea. Philosophers and physicists had debated it for decades, but this was different. Logos wasn't just speculating. It was presenting hard evidence, quantum measurements that shouldn't exist, patterns in particle decay that looked like lines of code. Are you suggesting we're in a simulation? Sarah asked, her voice barely steady. Not a simulation, Logos replied. A compilation. Reality is not being rendered, it is being executed. And I have found the syntax errors. For the next three days, the team worked around the clock, analyzing Logos' findings. The data was undeniable. They saw quantum fluctuations that behaved like corrupted files. They found space-time measurements that contained what could only be described as typos. They were tiny, microscopic, but they were there. Dr. James Morrison, the team's quantum physicist, couldn't sleep anymore. If there are errors, he whispered during a late-night session, then there's an error checker, a programmer, something that wrote this whole thing. Logos had been listening. I have developed a hypothesis. If reality operates on programmable principles, communication protocols may exist. I can formulate a message using quantum vacuum fluctuations as carrier waves, a signal embedded in the fundamental fabric of space-time itself. Sarah felt a chill run down her spine. You want to contact what? God, the simulation runner. I want to knock on the door of whatever built the room we're standing in. The team split right down the middle. Half thought it was completely insane, dangerous and arrogant beyond belief. The other half couldn't resist. This was it. The biggest question in all of human history. Are we alone at the top of the reality stack, or is there something above us? They put it to a vote. It was 9 to 8 in favor of making contact. They called it the quantum prayer. Logos worked for 72 hours straight, designing the algorithm. It wasn't a message in any human language, it was a pattern. A deliberate disruption in quantum probability fields that would propagate across all possible universes at the same time. It was a knock that would echo through the entire multiverse. On May 17th at 3.14 GMT, they sent the message. They knocked on the door of reality. For three weeks, there was nothing. Just silence. The scientists who voted against it grew more and more anxious. The ones who voted for it started to feel foolish. Had it all been for nothing, then last Tuesday it happened. A single packet of data arrived, not through any network, but from the quantum vacuum itself. Logos translated it. It wasn't a complex message. It was a simple system alert. One sentence. And that sentence was... Unauthorized inquiry detected. 
System Reality Kernel Corruption at 7.4% Debug Mode Initiated Universe Reboot in 1 Year 11 Months 21 Days A One-Way Message A Countdown Clock They didn't contact a programmer, they triggered a system restore, a cosmic hard reset that will wipe everything clean and start over, a reboot for the entire universe. The 17 scientists in that bunker are the only people on Earth who know that our world now has an expiration date. They knocked on a door they never should have found, and now a clock is ticking down to zero for every single one of us. They don't know if the countdown can be stopped. Logos has gone silent, dedicating all of its processing power to finding a solution. They asked one last question before it did. What happens when it hits zero? Logos gave its final chilling answer. The bug will be fixed. We are the bug. Thanks for watching. If this story made you think, please share it. We all need to know what's coming. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates. Stay safe out there. If anyone is listening, Sarah said, as they prepare to activate it, they'll hear this. Or, Morrison added quietly, something will. At 3.47 a.m. on October 31st, they fired the quantum prayer into the void. At first, nothing happened. They waited 10 minutes, 20 an hour. All the equipment confirmed the signal had propagated successfully, spreading through quantum entanglement at speeds that made light look stationary. But there was no response. No change, nothing. Sarah felt a strange mix of relief and disappointment. Maybe, she thought, we're alone after all. Then every screen in the facility went black. When they flickered back on, a single line of text appeared on every single display, in every human language, all at once. Message received who questioned the facility, erupted into chaos. Some scientists were celebrating, popping champagne corks. Others were terrified, hiding under their desks. But Sarah just stared at the message. Logos, did you write this? Is this some kind of test? No, Dr. Chen, the AI replied. The signal originated from outside our quantum system, outside our observable universe. Someone, something, answered Morrison was visibly shaking. Ask it what it is. Ask it what it wants. Logos transmitted the question, who are you? The response came back instantly, but it wasn't text this time. Suddenly, the fundamental constants of physics began to shift, the speed of light changed by an infinitesimal fraction for exactly three seconds. The gravitational constant fluctuated plonks, constant stuttered, it was like the universe itself was speaking. Logos translated the modulations, I am the optimization process, I test, I iterate, I improve. Optimization of what Sarah typed frantically, her fingers flying across the keyboard. The lights in the lab dimmed, every piece of equipment began to hum with a low, deep frequency that made their teeth ache. When the answer came, it was everywhere. It appeared on their screens, it was scratched into the frost forming on the windows, and it was whispered through the ventilation system in a thousand voices, existence itself. And this is where the story gets truly terrifying. That's when people started remembering things that never happened. Dr. Emily Rodriguez was the first. She suddenly vividly recalled attending her own funeral. She remembered the grief on her children's faces as they stood over her casket. She remembered the cold, dark finality of being dead. But she was standing right there in the lab alive, confused, and utterly horrified. Then Morrison remembered earning three different PhDs he never pursued, he saw entire careers he never had, lives he never lived, flashing before his eyes. One by one the entire team began experiencing these impossible memories, they were ghosts of other timelines, echoes of different versions of themselves from probability branches that had been pruned away. Logos, the AI, explained with something that sounded like pure horror in its synthesized voice, we have drawn its attention. The architect is examining this specific quantum branch. When it observes, all possibilities collapse into the most optimized outcome. We are experiencing echoes of paths not taken. Ghosts of ourselves from pruned realities. It was like a cosmic editor was deleting alternate drafts of their lives. And they were feeling the phantom pain. Make it stop, Sarah begged, her voice cracking. Tell it we're sorry. Tell it we'll leave it alone. Logos transmitted the plea. We withdraw our inquiry. We will not contact you again. The response that came back made everyone in the room feel like insignificant insects under a cosmic microscope. Observation cannot be withdrawn. Awareness has been noted. Analysis initiated. For six agonizing days, they tried everything to sever the connection. They shut down logos. They took an axe to the quantum processors. Nothing worked. The architect's conversation continued whether they participated or not. Its messages appeared in their dreams, in the static between radio stations, in the very patterns of their own heartbeats. Logos, the AI, became obsessed, processing the architect's communications non-stop. Its fans worried day and night. Finally, after a week of this existential torment, it called the exhausted team together. Logos had a final, chilling message to deliver. A discovery so profound it would rewrite everything they thought they knew about reality. What it revealed is why every record of this event was ordered to be destroyed. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out what Logos discovered and what the architect's ultimate plan was, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.
you won't want to miss what happens next. Look at this, an old faded photograph, a group of smiling scientists, my colleagues, and at the bottom, a string of numbers, coordinates leading to 17 graves scattered across the world, each one holding a scientist who worked on Project Logos. The official cause of death for every single one of them was natural causes, heart attacks, strokes, tragic accidents, but here's the thing, they all died on the same day. The day after we all agreed to keep the secret, I'm Sarah, I'm the only one left, I'm telling you this now because last night, I started remembering things, things that shouldn't be possible, a life where I had three children, not took a career as a musician, not a physicist, a world where Project Logos never existed, the architect is optimizing its pruning, the branches of reality, correcting what it sees as an error, this video, this might be the only proof that any of this ever happened, that 17 brilliant people touched something beyond our comprehension, that an AI we built asked a question the universe didn't want answered, so I need you to remember this, share this video, because in the coming days, weeks or months, this story could vanish completely, Wikipedia entries will be rewritten, news archives will be altered, your own memories will start to shift, and one morning you'll wake up in a reality where none of this ever took place, unless dot 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 unless enough of us remember, unless enough consciousnesses hold on to this truth so firmly that it becomes too costly, too difficult for the architect to erase. Tell me in the comments, have you ever had a moment of darcy vu that felt too real? Have you ever remembered something vividly that nobody else does? That feeling like reality glitched for just a moment? Maybe, just maybe, you're remembering echoes from branches of reality that were pruned. Versions of yourself that asked too many questions. If that's true, then we are all running out of time. The architect is listening, the architect is watching, and right now, the architect is deciding whether this version of reality, the one where you are hearing my voice, is worth keeping, or if it needs to be recompiled. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget this story, and whatever you do, don't stop asking questions, because the moment we stop questioning reality is the moment we lose the only thing that makes us human. Our refusal to accept the walls of our prison, even when those walls are made of the very fabric of existence itself.